following video was designed to raise your awareness of working near energized power lines. It is important to point out that there are two electrical utilities in Newfoundland and Labrador. Before starting any work around energized power lines, it is necessary to know which utility you may need to contact. Newfoundland Power is the primary distributor of electricity in the province, supplying 90% of residential electricity service on the island portion. Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro is the primary generator of electricity in the province and supplies industrial and residential customers in Labrador, some rural areas in central Newfoundland, as well as the island's south coast and the northern peninsula. The province's electrical power utilities can provide information regarding overhead and underground power lines, as well as voltage information and minimum clearance distances. This video was produced by Newfoundland Power and contacting us is referred to throughout the program. However, if you intend to do any work around energized power lines, please contact the electrical utility that services your area. You can contact Newfoundland Power by calling 1-800-474-5711 or Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro at 188-737-1296. Power lines are located throughout the province. They run overhead and underground. Every day there are numerous pieces of equipment being operated that have the possibility of contacting energized power lines. This equipment may include dump trucks, excavators, boom trucks, loaders, backhoes, and more. Every contact with an energized power line has the potential for serious injury or even death. Working near these power lines, however, can be completely safe. Working safely near energized power lines requires training, planning, knowledge, application of the regulations, and the cooperation of Newfoundland Power. Everyone should be familiar with the safe operation of any equipment they'll be using around power lines. It was a beautiful Sunday morning. I remember it was a cold wind, a northwest wind blowing. And it was a long span, so I decided that we'd do it that morning because there was no traffic. And I had a full row of 10M strand on the truck. So I climbed the first pole and double dead in it and done hooked the strand on and came down. And I went up in the second pole and, and done the same. I, I doubled in in it. And I drove a J hook in, into the side of the pole. And I hauled I the 10 M strand up and put it in the J hook. So I got to the back side of the pole, which we always do when we're pulling up in case the J hook comes out. So I went around to the back of the pole. And I had to wait another little bit. So I decided to undo my belt and put my belt up above a lion so I could lean back in the pole and get comfortable, seeing I was waiting there. And the boys were doing their job. They were, they were opening everything up. And they were going to drive ahead so far with the truck to pull the strand a little bit. And then they were going to sag the strand up, jack it up. And I was going to put my preform on. And then something went wrong. The strand hooked in the guardrail because and, and, and went tight. And, it, and before they stopped it, it shot up. And, and it clapped with the with a single phase line over 14,000 volts. I have no recollection of the accident, nothing that I, at, at that time, what, how they got me down out of the pole. The boys told me one spur stayed in the pole that kept me up there. The other leg was just hanging and I was broke off, but I don't, I don't remember none of that. He had just come out of OR when I got there. And he, of course he, he wasn't very, uh, coherent. They took him, Dan, I only had a minute with him, and they took him and airlifted him to St. John's, and uh, and then the doctor called me in and uh, to the room, and he, he told me that, <clears throat> you know, a bit about the accident. He couldn't tell me everything, but he did say that it didn't look good. When I first saw him uh, in the hospital, he was very swollen face, everything, his whole body was just swollen up. But uh, when they did the changing, they let me stay there, and it was, it was very, very um, horrifying. Let's take the next few minutes to discuss the hazards associated with working around energized power lines and how contact with them can be prevented. We'll begin with the dramatization of an accident. After viewing it, I'll discuss the incident in more detail. 
Here, a contractor is preparing to drop off a piece of equipment near some power lines. Once he positions the truck, he correctly chocks the wheels and deploys the outriggers. The truck is now safely positioned and secure. Next, he attaches the slings as he prepares for the lift. Moving to the controls, he commences to lift the equipment from the truck. His focus is on the apparatus, not on the position of the boom. As the equipment is swung off, the boom makes contact with the energized line. Startled, the driver remains on the truck. He immediately calls 911, who in turn notifies Newfoundland Power. A utility truck is quickly dispatched. The power line technicians arrive on the scene and de-energize the lines. Once it's safe to do so, they assist the driver off the truck. Now let's take a closer look at the incident and see where he went wrong and what he did right. Prior to commencing work near power lines, the following should be undertaken. The site surveyed to locate any overhead lines. A hazard assessment should be completed. An approach and exit plan developed and followed. In this case, the driver positioned and set up too close to the power lines. He did not take the time to survey the site or notice how near he was. He was working alone, did not have an observer to safely guide him into place or notice his position relative to the lines. He clearly did not have a plan in place. When working near overhead power lines, always make sure you are a safe distance from the electrical source. The regulations state the minimum safe distance that should be maintained is 5.5 meters or 18 feet. Contact Newfoundland Power for information regarding minimum safe distances. Also, anyone operating equipment with the capability of contacting energized power lines must have completed an approved power line hazards training course. Did this driver, in this case, complete the course? Most importantly, in this incident, why wasn't he killed? The reason involves how electricity flows from its source to ground. Electricity will take all paths to ground and almost anything can be a conductor. In this case, the path to ground was completed through the boom, the outriggers, the pads, and the tires. Once contact was made, the path to ground was established. On July the 9th, 1999, Tim was working for a rental company. He was putting up a big tent. It had eight center poles so that a corporation could have a private party the next morning. Tim and another young man, John, were asked to go under the canvas and put up the last pole of the tent. The boss said, we'll stand back here and let you know if you get too close to that power line. Well, the power arced, Tim was killed instantly, and John spent several weeks in the burn unit. When Tim was killed, my life changed. Totally. I think of him every day. I ache for him every day. Every, every family holiday, every special day, every ordinary day, we miss him. If conditions are right, even dry wood or plastic can conduct electrical current. How well it conducts electricity affects its ability to harm or kill you or those nearby. Once contact is made with an energized power line, the ground around the point of contact for some distance will become and remain energized. The area will be unsafe for an approach. Always contact Newfoundland Power to obtain your permit before working inside the minimum safe distance area. In this situation, the driver correctly decided to remain on the truck and call for assistance. Personally, this accident has cost me, wow, it's cost me a lot. Uh, we had a good life. I mean, my wife worked for 22 years in Springdale. I worked, uh, the kids were, our, our kids were raised, I mean, getting raised. My, my daughter was in university. Uh, we were out big outdoor people, which we try to still be. I mean, we do a lot of skidooing, a lot of quadding, a lot of camping. Uh, 
I would not be able to do any of that right now without my wife. She hasn't worked for anybody else since the accident. She's done a lot of work, and that, but without her, I would be, I would be in a pretty hard mess. Uh, there was so much that he couldn't do at first uh, that I helped him do. Some of the things that I had to help him with um, was um, toiletry, uh, brushing his teeth and bathing him, and you know, getting shower and. Uh, shaving, shaving him, and basically everything. It's um, cost me uh, financially as well. The loss of my hands has meant, there's a, there's a lot of things, uh, the, the, probably the main one is touching, touching my wife. You, I got no, my stumps now are, it's all different, it's always pain there, it's always a tingle in my hands, it's not like the tips of your fingers now, I can't. Is not the same, right? It has been a life-changing experience, but not for the better. Always contact Newfoundland Power prior to commencing any work activity near energized power lines. If the minimum distance cannot be maintained, they may be able to provide insulating guards. They may also be able to de-energize the area or reroute the power. Here are some other occasions when contact with energized lines may be possible. When working with or near damaged poles, extreme care should be taken. Any attached or downed lines may be energized. If you see a downed pole line, stay back a minimum of 30 meters or 90 feet. Contact Newfoundland Power immediately. Trimming or felling of trees near power lines should be avoided. Wood has the possibility of conducting electricity. If contact is made, the path to ground could be through you. When erecting a scaffold or any elevated equipment, know the required distance that should be maintained from any energized lines. Once again, this information can be obtained from Newfoundland Power. Do not proceed without it. Trucks with their dump raised, excavators with an elevated boom, or any equipment that has the possibility of touching power lines are at high risk of making contact. Equipment operators must always be diligent and keep a sharp lookout. Better still, have an observer act as a guide. Uh, as a grader operator for the um, MD number nine, I backed my back uh, tandem over the edge of the road and then I tried to uh, go forward. I kept slipping sideways and uh, after on the third attempt I felt something tug from behind and I, I thought, oh boy, I, I pretty much knew I contacted a power pole, I knew it was there. And, not very long, a few seconds, I, I looked out to see the front tires, or they, they started just roasting. Uh, it, it scared me to the point of, I thought, well, uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna get out of here. I, uh, I hit the ground, and there's a good chance I, I maybe stumbled or, or fell back, or my legs, they just felt like they were on fire. I, did, I, 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 I just, I couldn't believe the pain a power line contact can do really major damage to your body. Uh, just in the blink of an eye, it's, it's horrible. I did have some major issues with my arms, of course, as well, you can see the damage that's been done here. Um, I had uh, exposed tendons here on my, on my right hand. Uh, I had uh, five inches of bone on my left arm, totally exposed to the elements. Um, I'm here to tell you it happens and you don't want it to happen to you. In this case, we see a dump truck beginning to back under some overhead lines. As he's working alone, the driver correctly stops his truck ahead of the lines, gets out, and observes the position of his equipment. This gives him a clear understanding of how close he can approach as well as the height of the lines if he needs to raise the dump. If you intend to move or transport any load with a restricted height limit along any public road, you may be required to obtain a permit from the Department of Transportation and Works. Newfoundland Power must also be contacted to determine if an escort is required. When operating equipment in this situation, a signal person must be positioned to ensure that a safe working distance is maintained from overhead lines. Remember, always plan the work 
and work the plan. Not all energized power lines are overhead. Today, many lines in residential and commercial areas are located underground. Everyone should always be aware of their location to avoid contact. Underground power lines present special hazards when any excavation or drilling is required. The location of any buried power or utility line must be established before any work is commenced. Once again, a hazard assessment should be undertaken and a work plan should be developed. Remember, plan the work and work the plan. Underground lines are often protected with a warning marker. Caution tape or other material may be encountered about a foot below the surface. If this or any other warning is discovered, stop work immediately and contact Newfoundland Power before continuing. You need to be aware that warning signs may not always be there. There may be no record of a buried line in the area in which you may be working. Also, warning signs may be incorrectly marked. It's your responsibility to check with Newfoundland Power to make sure the area is safe and free of energized lines before commencing any work. When working around energized power lines, always observe the following. Follow the instructions provided by Newfoundland Power. Conduct a hazard assessment. Obtain the plan for any buried lines. Show others the location of the power lines. When moving or positioning equipment, use an observer and maintain visual contact. Warn of any dangers. Only attempt to exit energized equipment if you're in an immediate life-threatening situation. If you have to leave, do so by jumping well clear and landing with your feet together without stumbling. Your entire body must clear the equipment. Never contact the ground and the equipment at the same time. Keep your feet together, hop or shuffle a safe distance away. If there's a life-threatening emergency or risk of fire, immediately call for assistance. If there's no immediate risk, call to have the power shut off. If someone has received an electrical shock, do not approach or touch them if they're still in contact with the source of the power or you believe the electricity is still present. Be sure to warn others to stay away. Stay in the area to warn others of the danger and wait until help arrives. Working around, near, or under energized power lines requires training, knowledge, caution, and common sense. Know the regulations and work carefully. Remember, it only takes one second to change your life forever. People think that it can't happen, but it can. It can happen to anybody.